In this video, I'm going to derive the momentum equation, which describes the conservation of momentum in an ideal fluid. First, let's remind ourselves of a few of the basics. The momentum of a body is the product of its mass and velocity. Note that momentum is a vector, and here I'm using the convention of bold letters to denote vectors. Newton's second law of motion states that the sum of the forces acting on a body is equal to the rate of change of momentum of the body. This can be written in the form impulse equals change of momentum. Consider a control volume that's part of a stream tube, with a flow going from cross-section 1 to cross-section 2 as shown here. Let the areas of the cross-sections be denoted A1 and A2, and the velocities U1 and U2. Now let's consider an infinitesimal time step dt. In time dt, the fluid will travel a distance ds1 at cross-section 1 and ds2 at cross-section 2. This gives us two elemental volumes of fluid, a1 ds1 and a2 ds2 at either end of our stream tube, from which we can calculate the change of momentum in time step dt. The change of momentum dm is given by mass times velocity on the right hand side minus mass times velocity on the left hand side, where the mass on the right is rho times a2 ds2 and on the left is rho times a1 ds1. We can now apply the impulse momentum equation and equate this to the sum of the forces times dt. If we denote the magnitude of u1 as u1 without the bold lettering as shown here and mod u2 as u2 then we have ds1 equals u1 dt and ds2 equals u2 dt. So we can substitute for ds1 and ds2 in the impulse momentum equation. We can now divide throughout by dt giving the equation shown here. Now we know from the continuity equation that a1 u1 and a2 u2 both equal the discharge q and we can write the equation as sigma f equals rho q times u2 minus u1. This is known simply as the momentum equation. The momentum equation is a vector equation so it can be written as a set of equations for different directions, as shown here. Sigma f is the sum of all the forces acting on the body of fluid under consideration, i.e. the control volume. Usually, these forces are pressure forces, the weight of the fluid, and the force exerted on the fluid in the control volume by any external bodies, such as the walls of a pipe. Note that in our derivation we assumed implicitly that the velocity doesn't vary over the cross-section of the stream tube. In practice, we can introduce a correction factor called the Boussinesq coefficient to account for variation of velocity over the cross-section. The Boussinesq coefficient multiplies the velocities in the momentum equation. This allows us to use the momentum equation derived for a stream tube for a wider range of domains like pipes and channels where the distribution of velocity over a cross-section is not uniform. Note that because this is a vector equation, it is important to get the direction of the forces and velocities in the right direction. I usually write the momentum equation in the form shown here as it makes it easier to get the signs right. Applications of the momentum equation include calculating forces exerted by flowing water on structures such as walls, gates and bends in pipes, and calculating energy losses at sudden transitions such as an expansion or contraction of a pipe area or a hydraulic jump. Let's take a look at this example 
in which we want to find an expression for the force of the water on a 90 degree vertical bend in a pipe. We will apply the momentum equation, which I will write in the form momentum in plus some of the forces equals momentum out. And we note that in this case the flow into our control volume is horizontal and the flow out is vertically upward. In other words, u1 is horizontal and u2 is vertically upward. The forces acting on the control volume are the pressure forces, the weight of the fluid in the control volume and the force of the bend on the water. At cross section 1, the pressure force is P1A1 and at cross section 2, the pressure force is P2A2. I'll denote the weight of the fluid in the control volume as W and finally, we have the force of the bend on the water. Note that the direction of this force is important. We're summing the forces on the fluid, so it's the reaction force we need to include in the momentum equation. This is the force indicated in red on the diagram. All that's left is to look at the momentum entering the control volume, which is horizontal in this case, and the momentum leaving the control volume, which is vertically upward. Remember that the momentum equation is a vector equation, so we need components of all forces and momenta in the directions of orthogonal axes. The choice here is obvious, in that we take a horizontal axis and denote it x, and a vertical axis, which we denote y. So, in each direction, we have the momentum entering the control volume, plus the sum of the forces acting on the control volume, equals the momentum leaving the control volume. In the x direction, we have rho q u1 plus p1 a1 minus the x component of the force of the bend on the water equals zero. Notice that the outgoing momentum has no horizontal component, so there's a zero on the right-hand side of this equation. We can rearrange this to find the x component of the force fx. In the y direction, we have 0 minus w plus fy minus p2a2 equals rho qu2. In this case, the incoming momentum has no vertical component, which is why the first term is 0. Rearranging to find fy, we have the equation shown here. Note that the force of the water on the bend is equal and opposite to the force of the bend on the water, so the force we are looking for is in the direction shown here. The magnitude of the force will be the square root of fx squared plus fy squared, and the direction of the force will be at an angle theta to the horizontal, where theta is simply the inverse tan of fy over fx, as shown here.